Hey everybody, I'm joining you from the ground here in the garden today because after a year and a half of putting videos on YouTube, we are now getting so many new subscribers every month that it seemed worth it to sit down and explain what our purpose is. And then we're also going to do a little experiment here in the soil. You know, when we started J&J &J Acres, we had no intention of having a profitable farm. In fact, our only desire was to reduce cost. We have five children and two adults in our household, and with that, we spend a lot of money on groceries every single week. It seemed to us the only way to make sure that we could curb those costs was to grow our own food. But we wanted to be very careful and not just end up spending our money going from the grocery store over to the garden center, buying chemicals, fertilizers, and soil amendments. We wanted to find a way to grow our own food using the resources we have here on the property. So I was pretty excited when I ran across the Back to Eden gardening method because we already had animals with viable manures that we could use to amend the soil and we have plenty of woods that we can use to make our own wood chips as a covering for that soil. And so far we've been very happy with the results. A year and a half ago this exact spot of ground was hard red clay that even the grass didn't want to grow on. In only six months it turned around into nice brown soil that had worms in it and after a year of planting, this is what we have now. But the questions still remain if we ever have actually tested the soil. And the truth is we have not. Because I had it in my mind that I could just watch the plants and see how they grow and make adjustments from there. But there's something to be said for testing first and trying to make the soil as best as it can be before you ever put seeds in the ground. Well, here we are starting a little bit late. Seeds are already in the ground, but we're going to do a test anyway. Now, I haven't hauled off and found the most expensive and accurate test that I could. I simply went down to the garden center and bought the only two soil tests that they have. One is this analog multimeter that allows me to test the light, moisture, and pH of the soil. And another is a chemical test that also lets me test the N, P, and K values as well as the pH. I decided to get both of them because I figured that they would play well off each other and we could verify some of the results. And I did like how the meter was going to give me an immediate result, whereas the other one I'd have to wait all night for the soil to be prepared before I can actually test it. So that's what we're going to do. Today we're going to test the pH using this analog meter. And then overnight I'm going to dry and prepare the soil so that we can do the chemical test in another video. So let me tell you how we did this test. We followed the instructions exactly as we were told. We had to have a sample that had no rocks or grass in it. The only rocks on our property are part of our driveway, so that was easy, but I made sure there was no mulch that got in the way. I dug a hole deep enough for the probe because it says the probe needs to be about five inches into the soil. So I dug a hole and then just scraped the dirt around the edges and from the bottom and added in water to make a muddy slurry. Now to make sure that our municipal water did not cause any interference with the test, I decided to use distilled water as a part of this. Once I had a good muddy consistency, we inserted the probe into the mud, turned it to the pH mode, and then we had to wait 60 seconds before reading the results. Now the probe's not the easiest thing in the world to read. It has a dial meter on it, similar to a speedometer in a vehicle. And it seems to me that the needle settled directly between the 7 and 8. So I'm going to say that the pH reading is a 7.5. So now I'm going to turn the question back over to you. If this were your garden and you're trying to grow peas and lettuce and turnips and other crops like that, what would you do with soil that has a pH of 7.5? Would you leave it the way it is and continue on being happy with that reading? Or would you try to adjust it in some way? And if you are going to adjust it, what would you find that is on your property to make that adjustment? Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time when we do the N, P, and K test.